As I mentioned recently, the Never Used Classic Tournament has begun. We're doing a little differently this year instead of all our cups running at once. We got a couple running in certain month intervals. So hey, if you didn't sign up for the Gen 7 or Gen 8 one, you could still sign up for later Cups of Classic and you'll be just fine to still try and qualify for playoffs. I love SMNU, y'all know that. So I'm going to cover a couple series from the SM Round 1. And conveniently, it's been, we got Evigaro and... Oh, I was about to say, I'm blue screen. And Eternally, two of the best SMNU players, I would say, throughout the generation. So, this kind of type of content interests you. Make sure that you do subscribe if you're not already subscribed. I'm on my way to hitting 10k by the end of the year. I want to do it. I don't know y'all that are here want me to do it too. So, hey, if you're not yet subscribed, make sure you subscribe. If you already subscribed, man, go leave a like. Leave a comment down below. What's your favorite thing about Sun and Moon in you? And if you don't play Sun and Moon in you, Play it! It's fun! Literally, it's a tier where Incineroar is S rank, and I find it really funny because it's doubles metagame god. Like, VGC, I believe it's always been incredible. Doubles OU for Smogon, I think it's also always been like one of the best mons. <laughs> but if you look at it in singles, it's always in a lower tier, but hey, Sun of Moon and you, best mon in the format, and it's undebatable, at least in my opinion. And this video, you know what? Not gonna be even about Incineroar. Um, you wanna see how many Incineroars we got? Like three. And none of them really did anything. <laughs> Instead, and it's, you know, it's because of how I picked to start the games, the ordering. We're gonna be talking about Toxic Spikes today. Now, for those that were not here during Sun and Moon, this was a conversation that was started near the very, very end of the generation. Whether Toxic Spikes should be banned or not. Yeah, that, that probably doesn't make a lot of sense immediately if you don't play a lot of this tier. But the reason for it, and why it's been floated, but maybe not necessarily ever, like, really forced through. Tux Spikes are really oppressive in this generation. Our hazard control in this tier is honestly not that amazing. we have It's not that we don't have options. It's that the options we do have are centralized between, like, three Pokemon. Zatu, Delmize, Blastoise. Those are the three best... And Blastoise, part of that is because it is Refresh. Zatu, it's just Magic Bounce, so it works really well on a lot of different teams. Really, every archetype can use Zatu. And in Delmize, you know, it does more than just spin. It's also, like, a really good breaker. And there's some mons that it checks defensively that you care about. Like, you know, any of the fighters, you even stand up against Comfy pretty decently, so that's pretty nice. The problem is that that's like it, and a lot of the, you know, Stoys and Delmize, they only really fit on balance. So, you don't necessarily love spamming balance all the time. So, T-Spikes can kind of feel a little bit more annoying, especially when you're playing bulkier builds. And then it's like, huh. Well, my control is probably Zatu or like a Silvalli Steel. <laughs> the Silvalli forms aren't really good in this gen because, you know, no multi-attack buff. So, we're going to showcase why with these first two games, T-Spikes are incredible. And look at Evigaro's team. And there's a nice little, I'd say, more offense-angled build. You know, you kind of have, like, a defensive core of, like, Dawn and Weezing. But Rhydon is, you know, it's not a wall, it's a tank. So it still hits really, really hard. Weezing, generally known for bulkier sets, but on this type of team, it wouldn't shock me if it's even a more offensive Weezing. Something to keep in mind is Weezing in this generation does have an offensive set. It's not the same set as what Evigaro ended up running this game, but there is one for Weezing. But the key thing here is the T-Spike matchup. For Evigaro's team, the reason I don't think hers actually really cares too much about T-Spike is you have four Pokemon entirely immune to it, and it's also offense. So, offense basically she's trying to win anyway before you can wear their whole team down with the T-Spike. So even though, I get Jesus, I don't know, is this, like, it is about Easter time, so it makes sense we have Jesus. He's come back. Also, shout out to all the all that celebrate the holidays that we got going on right now. There's a lot of religious ones. I hope you're I hope you're having a great time. But one of the issues for his team here is, um, and I, I don't like to be rude, but I'm gonna be honest, this team kinda is bad. It there's a couple reasons. One, I don't know what the identity of the team is. I don't know what it's trying to do. The closest thing I was able to think up is Maybe you're just trying to play to, like, SD Pangoro doing something. Like, you got T-Spikes to chip away at just a lot of stuff. You've got Heliolisk, maybe, if you're, like, 
God, I was gonna say specs, but you need to be Scarf on this team. Because the team's just too slow. I don't know. The problem, though, is there's no removal, and you need to be Garbodor on this type of team if you're not going to have removal. You need to, like, make this a Rotom. I need to make this a Garbodor. Rotom just means so you keep a ground and you do, really. <laughs> but you need to have a way to deal with T-Spike. And so you're going to see real quickly, this game gets really bad for Jesus. So, Emmy leads off with her Obama Snow, because Obama's also just looking incredible this game. There's not... The Ice Resist is, of course, Slow King, so it loses to you. And she immediately switches in Weezing, even though she could have traded damage there, because Heavy Slam doesn't really threaten you that much. She still decides to just switch, because it gives her great position to the Weezing, to get this T-Spike up. And it's already over. She she wins the game. But please tell me how her opponent's supposed to do anything. They, they really can't. Their team isn't offensive enough to where they disregard it. It's a team that is naturally built to play kind of slowly. I mean, you got four really just kind of, you know, slow-paced ones right here. Heliolisk, yeah, sure, it's fine. And Pangoro is fine as well. But overall, the team's not going to be able to manage to really fight back against the T-Spike. And most of the team cares. So the Slow King comes out, and if you're using Slow King to check a Sigilyph, odds are your Assault Vest. And also you'll see the damage from the Scald here, this is very, like, Assault Vest damage. If it's doing over half, yeah, it's got Special Attacking Vest. So what Evie Garo can now do, is the Scald still doesn't do, like, enough to where you're immediately threatened. She can just take some turns to spam Roost, eventually the Slow King has to switch, and you're not going into either of Weezing or Steelix versus the spawn. <laughs> so... She, for free, got the poison on this and the poison on Dino. Now you see a, in my opinion, really bad play. Um, you don't want to Mega Evolve the Aldino like that. I, I'm i sure part of the reason was they wanted the bulk. The problem is you need to retain Regenerator in this matchup for, like, pivoting around a bomb of snow and even to a lesser extent Sigilyph, but also because, again, you have no counterplay to T-Spike. So... You need to have it so that you are just forced to wish protect. <laughs> then we see a great play from Evie here, knowing that Aldino would switch. Throws off Sword Swift with the Dawn, and that's what I was talking about. Where, yeah, I mean, the Mon is kind of defensive in nature, but it's more of a tank than a pure wall. So now it SDs up, and there's really not a ton that Jesus has. His best play was to go Weezing here, and Evie reads it very nicely. Gets the Stone Edge, and even though right on needs to burn, the next one will still KO. So... Dawn did what it needed to, got rid of the Weezing, and now at this point even, like, Togodomaru's looking pretty decent for a late game. Because the Steelix is so low, so you actually just beat it. <laughs> and then we see Evigaro make a very nice read here, too. Personally, I think I would've just EQ'd, but... Reading to protect there and going for Sword Stance is the better play. We should be able to get rid of this, too. And from here, I mean, there's really nothing her opponent has. I mean, she's gonna... They're gonna go Lisk here, they're gonna KO the Dawn, but... Do you care? <laughs> you got no good tomorrow. You got a bomb of snow that could also come out because you know this is choice. Like I said, I think it even has to be scarf, so you care even less about that. <laughs> she mega balls the bomb of snow. Also, something that I, I think, people are always making a mistake with the bomb of snow. I don't know why they run. Um, what's it called? Snow warning. Why aren't we soundproof? You know, like. Technically, in this sequence, Snow Warning doesn't grief you at all. Because it activates at the very end of this turn, and as a result, you actually start turn 20 here with the five full turns. A lot of the time, what I'll see, though, is people have Snow Warning. They'll throw it out, like, maybe... For example, if Evergard had thrown the Abomb Snow out here, as Steelix was, like, throwing off an Earthquake, she would have lost a turn of her hail for no reason. This is why I like Soundproof more, though, because it even gives you a little bit more extra defensive use. Because you can, like, pivot it in on a Helios Kuiper voice, which I... I don't know. <laughs> it's like the tiniest bit of min-max you can do, but it still feels like it makes sense. And also, very nice little tech you see here with Protect the Bomb of Snow. It's already, like, really good anyway, because so many Pokemon are choice-locked in this tier that want to beat you. So, like, Choice Banner, Aerodactyl, and Choice Scarf Simeon are two that just come to mind immediately. You could even throw a Token Amaru. But having the Hail plus T-Spike combo, just immaculate synergy for this type of battle. And like we said, I mean, at this point, the T-Spike just, that it that on its own will win her the game. And here's what I was talking about, too, with the offensive wheezing. You see HP Grass revealed here. Uh, <laughs> nice 14. 
<laughs> Did absolutely nothing, but it doesn't matter. Now she'll just trade damage versus a Pangoro. Sack her Weezing to get rid of it here. Also, we'll let the Future Sight pop on Weezing instead of something else on her team. It's very, very simple. We see this faint to poison, and now from here, the Obama Snow will be able to win, because I don't think Scarf Heliolus Kuiper Voice can even KO that, but she makes... You know, the simple play, go to the immunity. I'm just going to skip a couple turns here because the battle is very over. Plot up here, though. And now, yeah. Helios, like we said, it can't do anything because you'll just get Protect Scouted. So they, they even go to it here and it's just going to die to the um, Hazards and the Snow. And then on the last turn, just to make sure the Slow King does not live to tell the tale, wipe out its entire family <laughs> with the never-ending Nightmare. Now, next game. Much better team. You actually have some counterplay to the T-Spike now with the Defog Rotom. And this is also just... This is like your cookie cutter Sun and Moon balance. It's still maybe not like completely cookie cutter. If you wanted to say like the true definition of this tier, this would be an Aerodactyl. <laughs> Pursuit is like the best... Pursuit and Toxic Spice are the best two moves in this generation. You you really see a lot of Pursuit Trap as you see Evigaro. She's like Miss Magius user 108. You know, number one. But it's Pokemon like Miss Magius, Sigilyph, and I feel like there's something else I'm forgetting, but those are two of the most annoying Pokemon to deal with if you don't have Pursuit. So you see that on a lot of teams to help out with these guys. So, and also, we just kind of seen Aerodactyl usurp Passimian as the dominant fast mon in the format, so. That's, that's a possible change if they really wanted to min max further. Plus, you don't really need this mon on here, I don't feel. Between um, Sceptile and Arrow, you'd have plenty of speed. All that to say, this team looks much more normal. Oh, also because there are mods you want to pursue trap for Sceptile. Like, even just getting it on mods like Zatu can be kind of nice. Though, I do like the synergy these two have, because if you're, like, Banded Passimian even, which I don't think on this team it would be, but, like, Banded Passimian plus just your all-out attack Sceptile variant, you are great at getting the poison types out of the way so that Sceptile can clean up with, like, life orb boosted hits at the end. Well, once again, though, T-Spike is still really good for Evigar here, and yeah, she's brought a very similar team to the last game in terms of just more Miss Magius stuff with an Ice-type Wall Breaker. <laughs> uh, but yeah, there's a little bit of counterplay here. The problem is that Rotom is, uh... Maybe not the best defogger because it's just really fragile so the mon kind of gets worn down really really quickly you have to get safe entry for it constantly so we'll, we'll see if mr jesus can do this so garbador is led with because like the first game there's nothing to absorb t-spike so lead with the setter immediately throw a t-spike up and now the game's just so much easier if does that once again now slow can come out scald's always free there if you really wanted you could have gone for like a future site if you're AB, but there's nothing that wants to keep taking skulls anyway. Now we see the future site set, and what's really funny, she can just stay in an attack here. <laughs> so she goes for a dragon tail. I would have scalded, but you know, it is what it is. As the Steelix comes out, and now here you always scald. Even though the switch is always obvious, you can still fish for burns like this, and if you burn the Slow King, that is still very, very, very useful. Yes, poison's more damage. But you're just trying to get some sort of status on it to bother it for the rest of the game. And overall, it's kind of inconsequential because you'll be able to deal with it fine later. Now here, I just... I don't know, man. <laughs> I don't think you want to go Rotom there. The idea, of course, was if it's going to set Stealth Rock, you burn it the next turn with Will-O-Wisp. But I just think you had a Steelix and even an Incineroar. You could have gone like Incin on, you know, get the Intimidate. You won't die in one hit. You'll take a lot. But you'll tank the hit, and then you can try to play from there. Steelix even. I know you don't want to lose Steelix, because it's still potentially a Miss Magius check. The reality check that I'll give you is that this mon's not checking Miss Magius that well. So, I, I don't know. I think risking this being the Z user is always a little tough, but I get it, right? It's, it's kind of like, you wouldn't expect this to be Z when there's, um... Miss Magus on the build. Anyhow. Packed. <laughs> now the Incident Roar comes out. This is just going to seed rocks, but it is a free turn. U-turn there, I think, is kind of whatever. 
At the very least, a lot. You get a crit there with Future Sight, so that's great. And you got Steelix back some lefty, so that's cool. Unfortunately, now, Pangoro kind of sweeps this team. Goro sweeps a lot of non very type teams. That's probably the issue I would say with this team. Is you don't have a Poison or a Fairy. And if you lack both of those, Goro just kind of has its way with your build. So, like, I don't know. What are you, what are you supposed to go to? Your Pissimian comes out? They're very lucky this is Lumberry Pangoro. Because some of them run Choppel, and Choppelberry would have, I think, won the game on the spot. Because you would have stayed in and drained. I guess then they can go Sceptile and Revenge kill you, but it's still kind of dire. Now that T-Smite gets set back up. And once again, we'll just see the rest of the game play out like how Game 1 did. We're now Sceptile and Cineroar pass. They're just all going to get poisoned. And yeah, it also detailed the worst thing in. There's really not a ton of counterplay available here. Because Goro's just going to force the issue versus this entire team. You don't even have to boost anymore. That knock is like super useful too, so this won't get its berry. Also, seeing that be fast was really funny, but it makes sense with the U-turn reveal earlier. But I mean, yeah. Goro now, anytime Slowking's out, that's kind of just a free switch in, especially since we know it's Lumberry on Pengoro. So it doesn't even have to worry about a Scald Burn. You just come in and say, all right, do something to me. Like, what am, what, what am I supposed to care about, you know? And as the Simeon goes down, it slowly but surely becomes a very, very, very guaranteed win for every Garo. The Mega Glalie now will come out, throw up an Ice Shard just in case the Sceptile stayed in. And you, you don't really care about Slowking, because once again, there's a Goro. And no double switch here is going to save you. If you want to double back in that Sceptile, okay. <laughs> you know, she would literally just sack something. And slowly but surely, Sceptile would just get overwhelmed too quickly through Poison and Stealth Rock Chip. And she does a little bullet, but just, you know, a little bit of damage. This thing low kicks. I gotta keep it a stack, bro. I have no clue why this has low kick. I don't know what that hits. At least not when it hits harder than, like, an Earthquake or a Focus Blast. I guess it would do more damage to Steelix, but, like, just draw an Earthquake. <laughs> <laughs> so every guard two is her round one opponent. I'm gonna get Eternally versus Seraphs. Now Eternally. He brought kind of a same team in both of these games here. Which is quite interesting. But as we look at the game one matchup, we see the demon, the comfy. And this is probably the worst time to try to bring a comfy. Because you queued into Golbat, and Golbat's probably the best way of making Comfy just completely irrelevant. You can run Hidden Power Psychic on Comfy. There's some people that'll go Calm Mind, Draining Kiss, Hidden Power Psychic, and then Grass Knot. Knot does a little bit more damage to Steelix, which is, you know, if you had Hidden Power Ground or Fire, one of the big targets for you to hit. Grass Knot does more than Giga Drain, so you, you know, you want a little bit more damage there once you drop the super effective coverage. And that also lets you hit Golbat a little harder. The problem is you still don't really beat it, and it... As a result, it's a little bit more niche. Usually with Comfy, it's a little bit easier to just rely on your teammates' support to weaken away at some of those um other checks to you. Because ground grass fairy coverage is kind of overall a bit better. So Doubtful that the Comfy even can ever break the goal bat, but also you gotta deal with Togo tomorrow. You even gotta deal with Incineroar, which is going to be bulky enough to take a hit and then could flare blitz you into the Shadow Realm. It's just overall a pretty rough matchup. And on the Eternally side, I mean, in terms of win con, really the point of this team is I think just slow roll it and eventually win with the Scarf Togedomaru late game. There's really not one Mon here that I say is like a setup sweeper. Glade can be. You could do Sword Stance with Shadow Sneak and then that kind of counts more as like sweeper as opposed to just dedicated breaker. Where if you went like maybe Leaf Blade or Knock Off last, you'd fit more under that category. So, that kind of delayed actually goes in, by the way. I mean, you look at this. The, shout out to me for... I'm going to give myself entire credit for creating Ghost DMZ Gallade. I'm the first person I know that ran it, and I'm the one that chills for it. So, <laughs> hell, man. Get, let me have that. Let me have that one creation. But it actually works really well this game, because you'll pop the Zaw too. Comfy can't actually one-shot you with anything, because Gallade has really good special bulk. So, unboosted draining kisses you don't care about. And Miss Magus will just die to Shadow Snake. Size is not going to be faster than you. Ensign Lamel. Really, it's just a matter of you try your best to never give it a free SD. And you try your best to not let Zatu then get punked. 
so let's see how this goes. Size versus Incineroar lead here. And since it's a very obvious Stealth Rock turn 1, Eternally says, hmm, let me stay in a knock. And since it's a very obvious Scald not killing you, he says, hmm, let me go for this terrible Hidden Power Grass. You see how little damage this does? This would be such a cooler tech if Hidden Power Grass did not do 52. The problem is because you don't actually do enough to two-shot after lefties. So Eternally has to go for that knock turn 1. And then go for Hidden Power Grass and see, like, if they greed the stand. But you have to at least knock turn 1 to guarantee, like, long-term progress. But you still get a lot of chip on the Toad there. Bringing it down to 17 is incredible. This as we talked about at the beginning. Potentially the win con is this Toga Tomorrow. So, Toad's one of the three mons, I'd say, standing in the way of that. You got that. And now Eternally Defogs. If you're wondering why it's not Prankster... It's because of this mon. <laughs> you don't want to you run Prankster Defog. <laughs> so, he defogs on the predicted knock, and then switches as the Ensign gets a crit, boosted knock on the Toad that probably mattered. I think Toad will tank, although it'll take like 90-something. As he uses Glade, and we don't fuck around with threats around here. So Eternally just CCs, doesn't care about the Zatu coming in. He knows also he can always just go into his Incineroar, and there's not really a good switch in here as the Toad comes out. Like we already saw, it can't kill Ensign with another Scald, he would have just given it the barrier range. So, let him set rocks, okay, on the next turn. is Eternally once again, utilizing Whimsicott as an Incineroar check, not something you'd normally see, but it works for him, as he just gets rid of the rocks once again, and Whimsicott wasn't really doing a whole lot for you anyway. So now the Glade comes back in, and again, we don't mess around with threats. This Toad getting crit early and dying, and also really only being the only real thing that guaranteed checks the Ensign defensively. Like, Eternally doesn't care, man. You switch your Zatu to it and once again. It probably was going to get packed up. And there's a Shadow Sneak. It's Life Orb on this team. But I bet you that Zatu was eventually just going to get packed up by, like, Life Orb Shadow Sneak anyway. Like, who cares, man? <laughs> he gets a whole bunch of chipped on this with It's Very, very beautifully done. As a Togue now can come in. And once again, like we talked about, there were three things standing in the way of the Togue Tomorrow Amaru winning. Now there's only one. And I will say though, I think this game, both players kind of mess up team builder wise from this. I think this game you go Iron Barb's Toga Tomorrow. One of the most common things to happen in Sun and Moon in you is a Toga Tomorrow 1v1 at the very end of the game, where it is two Toga Tomorrows going for Iron Head and just hoping to win. <laughs> and I think when you have a ground on your team, there's really no reason to not go for Iron Barb's because of that. I, you want to have that exchange be as positive for you as possible because of how frequently it happens. So I think since both players have a size of a toad, missed opportunity. But it is what it is. Eternally gets a knock on the Zatu. Now he can just spam knock off forever. As you're going to see the instant just get his old berry. Come back up to 55. And just so long as he has the Incineroar, it's pretty nice. Miss Mage is coming out. That lets you know damn sure there's a Continental Crushing. <laughs> if they had gone comfy, you could have like... You know, goal bat was obviously then coming out, but at least you're not, like, signaling, hey, I've got, I, ha I have the Z-move, guys. But yeah. Because, again, look at, this thing is U-turn twice now on Eternally's Comfy. Or not Comfy, Token Amaru. It would, be, it would have 33% less HP if he was Iron Barbs. So, food for thought, food for thought. I I think Iron Barbs Togue is definitely a lot better nowadays. Once again, it would have taken another. It would, be, it would have been at 31% by this point. It'd be at 9% now. It would have died. If Eternally was Iron Barb's Toga tomorrow, the game ended right there. It doesn't matter because the game's ending right here. But just think. You wouldn't have had to reveal your Earthquake. <laughs> Anyhow. Like I said, Iron Barb's really does make a lot of difference in those Toga tomorrow exchanges. Especially since, I mean, again, like I said, he used U-turn a lot on Eternally's Toga. You could just throw your Toad out versus another person's Toga tomorrow and just fish for chip even on those U's. Now we get game two. Both players, again, were like very similar teams. I mean, you got both with potentially an offensive Drudagon for Stealth Rock. I mean, I would think it'd be a d defensive one on these teams. But, I mean, it's not like it's unfeasible. Unfeas infeasible? One of those words. It's not impossible for it to be offensive rocks. I think it works on the team structure, because this could easily be pivoted into a bit more offensive of a style. 
this team I'd say probably more always more often than not it'd be defensive rocks Drodagon just given the structure looks a bit more like it lends itself to that but looking at mons I really really like I really like this Mismagius I think it goes really hard this game you plot up and like Golbat if you're Rockium or even if you just have Power Gym this isn't really doing a ton even if you're Ghost Deal it, it doesn't really have a great way to fight back and then the other reason I say that is, oh, look, only one of these is Scarf. <laughs> and I would assume it'd be the Token of Mars, so it's going to be a slower Pissimian. This does not get to turn into a Dark type this gen. So Miss Magus could go for Shadow Ball or Never Ending Nightmare and smoke its pack. Golbat, I'm pretty sure if Rocks are up, gets smashed by plus two Never Ending Nightmare. Comfy sure as hell ain't doing anything. And you think Dredagon's standing up to that either? No. So, so maybe just snack wraps that entire team. Um, his way of fighting back is hoping for a better comfy game. This is actually not a bad comfy matchup at all. Like, again, you talk about Hidden Power Ground, it folds the token to Maru and it helps versus Incent. So, again, he's gonna. Seraph's both get brought comfy because he's a dirty, 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 despicable player. But, looks like he's gonna go for the comfy angle this game. We're going to see Dredagon lead versus Miss Magus lead. Eternally, we'll switch with the Swiftness because there's no reason to stay in. Um, I lied. He stayed... <laughs> After dropping it, of course, he just said everything nightmares. <laughs> what was the point of that? Oh, wait. I forgot. I'm literally watching this game. I remembered this exchange and I was like, oh, what's happening there? <laughs> and yeah, Shadow Ball versus the Gold Valley, but after chunking the ever-loving hell out of that Dredagon, <laughs> very beautifully done. Now he goes to his Dredagon, and he can get some Stealth Rock going very, very easily. We see Eternally with the Helmet. Once you see Miss Mage's Z, you can pretty comfortably assume the Dread will be defensive. As here, never ending, not never ending, Devastating Drake comes out. You couldn't, yeah, you could have given me like 10 guesses for what move this Dredagon would have used there. I'm not sure Devastating Drake would have ever come. Because I don't know why we went for it there. I, I mean, naturally, the answer was to kill the Dredagon. I just feel like burning your Z to do that this early, when there was even a Whimsicott that could have been pivoted into, and just blocked it entirely. Not the best move. So now Miss Mages comes out. Shadow Ball picks off the Dread. I probably Comfy come. Not Comfy. I was going to say the Token Tomorrow comes out. So this is going to go for an Iron Head. Eternally stays in, hoping to see U turn, but a little unfortunate. Now the Stoys, though, can always be responded with, and hey. You've won the Stealth Rock War for now. You will get to spin as the Pissimian comes out. And like we said, only one of these two can be Scarf, or at least only one of them should be. And with Drud revealing Z, this is probably just Bandit. So, we're going to see a CC come out, and yep, yep, Bandit. 76% <laughs> is definitely Bandit Chip. Unfortunately, you got cooked by a Torrent Scald and burned. So now Pissimian is just gone. They didn't go Togo tomorrow, which I found just to be an absolute rabble rouser of a move unfortunately eternally didn't decide to go for another scald which would have been insane but it's fine he gets token maru in as the slow king's what's thrown out and since we saw z earlier from dread we know the slow king won't be any like calm mind slash nasty plot z move stuff this is stoys is gonna always have to be the response he could go whimsy there but stoys is a little easier because it doesn't seed momentum also doesn't allow the Golbat to come out and just defog away rocks, which maybe you want to keep up. So, at least the Signal Beam revealed, which I think is kind of weird. I feel like you only see Signal Beam Slowking on physically defensive sets if it's going to be a, like, booster with the Z-Crystal for Savage spin out. So, curious set for sure. Now the Golbat finally gets a Fog. Unfortunately, this knockoff is going to be incredibly clutch here. Getting rid of this thing's item just makes it easier for Miss Mages to potentially deal with later on. And speak of the devil, Miss Mages comes out to block a Super Fang. And now you just get to slowly beat this thing down. Unfortunately for Eternally, he doesn't get special defense drops. Even there on the turn we skip through. <laughs> no special defense drops to be had here, but he's just trying to keep this low. Because again, the end game here is probably go for like Whimsicott or Togodomaru sweeping. Now, Togodomaru will beat this one down no matter what, but Whimsicott likes having it gone now. Moonblast that through. As once again, Togodomaru being used to pivot into Togodomaru, this thing would have lost like half its HP by now. <laughs> but it, like, again, this is like, this is 
prime lightning around Togunomaru angle because you need to have the electric immunity, so. Won't won't shame you this time a turn, but just just you keep an eye out on yourself, friend. Keep yourself safe. That was a cop third out versus the king. You can just throw off an energy ball here. The Togo tomorrow will take five bajillion from it. Yep, nice 41%. <laughs> so much, dude. Because the stories will be used as a sack. If you go comfy, I always have my Togo tomorrow as an answer. More okay, fine. Incineroar's fine too. As the slow king comes out. It's it works as well, because like it's good versus everything that could come out. Even Slow King, like, you don't really care. You just knock. And if this wanted to stay in forever, I mean, you just keep spamming knock and you'd probably beat it. But, I see Whims I got now. Moon Blasting there because it's a little stronger than an Energy Ball. So Eternally was just trying to catch the Toad potentially. And Seraph actually goes for another Scald instead of a Slack Off. Recognizing that he's not really going to be able to get HP back anyway. So, didn't make much sense to try and recover. As the Comfy at least is able to boost and KO Whimsy. Unfortunately, there is still a Toga Tomaru here. And not draining kiss? Yeah, this is just not strong enough. So eternally we'll be able to iron head down this Comfy. And once again we get Comfy, not Comfy, Toga Tomaru on Toga Tomaru Violence. As we will just see them iron head down each other. Eternally wins that speed tie. Gets a flinch even. Wins that speed tie as well. Oh, the gaming! Oh my lord, it's so good! Because Incineroar will come out, and yeah, you're not getting like 10 flinches in a row. It's not happening, friend. Earthquaked. Baba Booey. Raps. Hope y'all enjoyed. You will definitely be getting more Sun and Moon and you content out of me over the next month or so, however long this tournament runs for. As I said, this, this is my second favorite in you tier ever. Number one is Gen 3, number two is Sun and Moon. Don't ask me what number three is. I really don't think you'll like the answer <laughs> but i hope y'all enjoy let me know down below what your favorite generation of venue is and i'll catch you next time guys peace